I never thought when I was studying Taekwondo with Simon and Philip Ree <laughs> that, you know, I would ever use this in, in uh, television or, or, or motion pictures. Hey guys, in part one of my interview with Lawrence Lamis, we're going to talk about some really cool stuff that's not in this book. Though you should get this. This is really interesting and insightful. Link in the description below, and he's going to tell us kind of the motivation of why he wrote this. But I really wanted to dig in more into the martial arts, the movies he was involved with. And then also there's an interesting story related to Lauren Avedon because he was on the Bruce Willow podcast and talking about uh, the time Lorenzo broke his nose. He took my nose and he put it over here and you know, broke my orbital bone here and whatever else. And, you know, my eye was, you know, was messed up, right? So so I wanted to get Lorenzo's side of that whole story. Anyway, I know what you guys are thinking. What am I drinking? Well, this super health elixir, uh, linked in the description below, you guys should buy this, man. This is going to maximize your health. And while you're down there in the description, get this book, man. You guys got to read it. It's, uh, reading's always good. I just want to give Jeff Langton a special shout out for setting us up. He, he's connected me with a lot of really cool people that I ended up getting on the channel, like Benny Urquidez, and now I got you. So. Oh, that's great. Hey, it, Jeff might be watching this, so I want to give a shout out to you, brother. Thank you for making this happen, and uh, I hope you're well. You look great. I watched uh, your actual interview uh, with David, so... Uh, that was great to see you up there. And thank you for the props. Thanks for all the, the, the great, you know, things that you said about working with me. I feel the same way about you, Jeff. You know, uh, I'm just talking to Jeff right now, David. Of course. I feel the same, the same way about you, buddy. Uh, it was a pleasure to work with you. I would do Final Impact, uh, The Revenge, in, in a second. Tomorrow night, man. Neon Graveyard. I'll be there. To have you, to have you back on, uh, on the set with me, bro. So God bless you. All right? I mean it. And he's making his comeback. He had just had his open heart uh, surgery, replacing a couple of valves. And, you know, it was a success and he's looking and feeling good. So I think he's going to get back in the whole acting thing. So maybe you guys will do. Uh, he's a, a warrior. He's yeah. a he's a warrior. So, yeah, we all wish yeah. him luck. Definitely. And, of course, he shared some very interesting things because he worked with all these great martial artists, including yourself. He's a master e Aido guy. And you know how hard that is? To master Aido, mm. that's what the live, live katana, I mean, where you put it like an inch from someone's head. You know, that's what he did. And he studied with Japanese people, plus Hill Cho. Hill Cho, he studied with him. Plus, you know, Lorenzo went to a, um, a military school. That's where he went to school and he learned how to box. You know, he knew how to wrestle. He knew, he knew how to grapple. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of what I wanted to talk to you about because even though your autobiography is such a great amazing book you really don't talk about your martial arts history and training in there yeah that that'll be another book I think uh, oh, you're because, do another one? Okay. because sure. that just just my martial arts training in in itself I think I could fill a few pages uh you know it's such a, a has have had such a vast experience of different styles and uh you know different teachers and, and so forth. No, but Renegated Heart, that book uh, that you're holding there was basically a response to all of the press throughout the years that I've received, not as an actor, but just as a personality, as a public figure. And a lot of times it was really unfavorable. And I didn't respond at the time because I always felt, and my publicist at the time, uh, we both felt that to respond to negative press only perpetuates the negative. Mm. Um, you're just going to sound like, you know, you're, you're uh, just upset that somebody wrote something negative about you and, and you're responding and, and that this just feeds the fire. So mm. my, my, my past response when dealing with anything negative, whether it's press or just people in my life that are negative, I just don't give it energy. I just let it die mm. like a tennis ball on the other side of the court. Just let it bounce till it stops. Yeah. And nice. so this book was kind of my answer to all the years of things that have been said about me and nobody ever heard, you know, heard my side, you know, what I ex actually experienced in, in those different events and, uh, and occurrences. So, 
that's what that it's a light read it's not a heavy book i didn't want it to be like uh a book of revenge you know that's just not who i am mm -hmm. uh and so it's a lot about my my parents so the book is a lot about my dad who was also an actor well-known actor my mom act, was an actress as well and it's kind of growing up a little bit but the book's about growing up in hollywood and then you know getting my first break in motion pictures and uh which was greece by the way the mm -hmm. first one with yeah. uh living it and john and and it was more of a personal book so the martial arts is gonna i'm gonna have to think about that and maybe start writing a treatment for that um for another book that i might that i might put out because i think you know when jeff and i were doing these movies in the 90s uh they were really pumping them out you know producers like uh uh, Rick Pepin and Joe Murphy over at uh, PM Entertainment. Um, you know they were Golden Globus. Mm -hmm. They were they were really putting out these uh, high octane action movies, and I feel very fortunate to have been a part of that. Uh, it, it wasn't my my intention starting out in the business was not to be a martial arts star. Mm -hmm. My intention was just to be a good actor. And uh, circumstances sometimes present themselves where you have opportunities to do different things that you didn't really think about, but it seemed to fit. And, and uh, that's the case with the martial arts that I did in the movies. It, I never thought when I was studying Taekwondo with Simon and Philip Ree <laughs> that, you know, I would ever use this in, in uh, television or, or, or motion pictures, but uh, the timing was right. Oh, yeah, that was the time martial arts just exploded on the scene, especially in the 80s. I mean, I guess Bruce Lee really kind of kicked it mainstream with Enter the Dragon, of course. Uh, let me ask, though, when did you actually start the martial arts training? Right. So I started uh, Taekwondo at an old Chuck Norris studio in Los Angeles on Wilshire Boulevard in La Jolla. And uh, it had just it had just been taken over by Jun Chong. Mm -hmm. um, Korean master sensei uh, and Jun, Mr. Chong uh, had two instructors, two, two main, well, three actually, that, that were helping him to uh, teach. And it was uh, Philip and Simon Rhee. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Of course, they're legendary from Best of the Best series. And Ken Nagiyama. Mm -hmm. and, and Philip and Simon, this was before you know, best of the best. It, it was before all of their, you know, martial arts uh, motion pictures that they produced and starred in. Of course, you know, now they're, they're legendary martial arts uh, uh, celebrities in their own right. But back in the day, this was 1979 okay. uh, when I started. And uh, they were just fantastic teachers. And uh, I, I had, I studied judo, uh, at the YMCA as a youngster. Um, and then, of course, like you said, just growing up and watching the Bruce Lee movies and the Chuck Norris movies and things like that, I, I really was was uh, really a fan of, of karate sure. and, I, and I wanted to learn it. And uh, I was working as a uh, physical trainer. I was a, a fitness instructor at a Jack Lane's health spa. Oh, yeah, that's in the book. And you met a very interesting uh, co-worker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so when I was, I was working as an instructor at Jack Lane's and this dojo, uh, Jin Chong was right down the street from my work. So I would pass by it every day. Sometimes I'd pass by it and I would stop. I was on a motorcycle at the time. I just pull over, park my bike and just walk to the corner and sit there and just watch the class through the window, you know? And then one day I just walked in there and I met, uh, Master Chong, and I told him I'd like to start Taekwondo, and he said, well, great, here's, here's your gi, and uh, this is our, you know, you know, sign up for our, our lesson plan, and uh, I, I just got into it, and I loved it. I, I went probably four or five times a week, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah, I went, I just, I went to karate all the time, and um, that's what started the whole thing, you know, and I worked out with a lot of people that became martial arts stars like Lauren Avedon, 
one of my students was Lorenzo Lamas. I mean, great guy, uh, really, really good athlete. And, and uh, Lauren was at Jim Chong for a long time. So was Sam Jones, Flash Gordon. He was oh, at wow. Jim Chong. Yeah, all kinds of stars over there. Yeah. I, I do want to ask you something about Lauren Avedon because somebody had mentioned this. I guess he was in an interview not that long ago and you guys were doing some self-defense video and you you might have broke his nose or something he took my nose and he put it over here and you know broke my orbital bone here and whatever else and you know my eye was you know was messed up right so yeah that was really that i i have to say that i still feel horrible about that 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 happened uh you know it was a zig when it should have been a zag and we were really close uh, you know, we had been uh, practicing the techniques, you know, before they rolled the camera a lot of times. And I choreographed this thing for him, and I said, listen, miss me by a mile. But he didn't miss me by a mile. And, uh, yeah, just, um, I think he leaned in, and, and it just was terrible. So <laughs> here's, and Lauren, if you're watching, I'm, I'm going through this, this whole scenario with you again right now. So I, yeah, it was a roundhouse kick and, oh. uh, and I got him right in the bridge of the nose with my shin oh. and, um, immediately like swelling started. I didn't get knocked out. I'm very proud of the fact that I didn't lose consciousness. <laughs> and Mike Irwin was producing this for us. Mike Irwin was also a black belt through June Chong. Oh, wow. And Mike, Mike Irwin produced this movie or not movie, the self-defense video, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and so Mike came running out immediately, you know, from behind the, the monitor and he says, Lauren, Lauren, are you okay? And I go, I go, Mike, I think I, I, we made contact. I think I, I, I hurt Lauren and Lauren goes, you broke my nose, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so Lorenzo called me after he busted my nose to go back to him. Uh, and said, and was crying. He's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, dude, just buy me some flowers. Come and visit me or something like that. No problem. He never did any of that. So I sued him. Um, what happened was I was really good friends with Stephen Hofflin. Stephen Hofflin was uh, the number one plastic surgeon in Los Angeles. Okay. Uh, during the uh, the late 80s. Uh, and and uh uh, he, I used to go watch him do magic at the Magic Castle. So I knew him uh, through the Magic Castle, and I also I, I had his number. I mean, I I was a personal friend of his. So I called him right away. I think he met Lauren in his office, and uh, we took care of whatever it was. I needed to have my nose put back. That you know, I mean, between my friendship with Stephen and and uh, and. Uh, hospital, whatever bills, you know, we took care of it, but I've never, I never hit anybody since before or after that in all the movies that I've done, all the fight scenes that I choreographed on Renegade, all my movies never happened again. So again, Lauren, I'm so sorry that it happened to you, bro. Uh, and I, but, and I think all the, actors he's, a, he's a handsome, he's a handsome devil. So I can't say that I ruined anything. <laughs> no, he's fine. I needed to have my nose put back. Um, so I guess all the actors and stuntmen you work with have to thank Lauren because I'm sure that experience in accident was like, okay, I got to make sure I'm like extra, extra cautious because I don't want to break another dude's nose. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe so. I mean, like Jeff said in your interview, he said, yeah. you know, of all the rehearsals that we did for that big fight in the neon graveyard, I never come close to hitting anybody. The guy would never hit you. You never had to think negative, like, oh, this guy's going to hit me. I have to worry about hitting me. He was always on mark. The guy, like, when we did that fight scene in the graveyard, he was there a couple hours before marking it all out. I didn't even know that. Oh. You know, so he, he, he takes that seriously. I'm always this far away from contact, you know. You have to be close. Yeah, but sure. in some shots, you can be like a foot away from, from the person. It depends on where you put the camera, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, on, on Renegade and Air America and all the movies that I've done, uh, the most contact is like a light tap, you know, just to the, to the 
to the stomach or something like that if I'm selling a kick. Yeah, sure. That's it. You know, and I've, I've gotten a lot of compliments over the years about the control that I had. Um, uh, just, you know, the thing with Lauren is really like, man, it, it eats me up inside. It really does. Yeah, well, I'm sorry to bring it up if that kind of brought you back there, but I needed to have my nose put back. It was interesting. The reason the guy actually wanted me to ask you is because of what Jeff said, how you're, you know, extra safe and, you know, probably the safest person to work with if you're going to fight him on screen. And then this guy's like, well, what about Lauren Avedon? I'm like, well, that, that could be an interesting story. I'm kind of curious to hear um, of your side of that. Yeah. But yeah, thanks for sharing. And sorry if that brought up bad memories for you. No, it, it, it's important to always emphasize, you know, uh, rehearsal at half speed mm -hmm. um, or even less sometimes, you know. I mean, because when you, when you choreograph a fight scene and you go to start rehearsing it, you know, for timing, um, everybody's tendency, not everybody, but most people's tendency is to speed everything up because mm -hmm. they want to get the technique right, you know, and they want it to look good. But I learned over the years that the technique on camera actually looks better if you consciously try to slow everything down. Mm -hmm. I'll just sell, sell the punch, sell the kick, you know, really sell it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, before, uh, like for example, on Renegade, I was working with a lot of stunt stunt people that didn't have a lot of martial arts experience. Mm -hmm. This was like in the early nineties when I started Renegade and there weren't as many martial arts stunt, stunt men and, and women as there are today. They were all just starting out. Cynthia Rothrock was just starting out in her movie career mm -hmm. when I started Renegade. So there, there weren't a lot of trained martial arts that do stunts. So I was working with a lot of cowboys, a lot of guys that knew how to throw a wide John Wayne punch, you know, and fall off a horse. Yeah. You know? So I had to teach them how to go with the technique. You know, if I trapped an arm and put it in an arm bar, I had to tell them like, we're just going to do this really slow. Just go with the technique. Don't try to resist it. Cause that's when people can get hurt when they try to resist a technique. Like you have a wrist lock on somebody, they tense up when you put it on them, it's going to hurt versus if it's like when you're in class, you know, and you're doing, you're doing, you know, uh, just uh, one step punching your skills, right? Mm -hmm. You go with it. You go with the wrist lock. You go with the arm bar. You, you know, you get thrown. You relax when you're being thrown. You know, you hit the mat to break your fall. Things like that weren't really understood. So I found myself a lot of the time kind of teaching people how, how to take falls and how to, you know, sell, you know, a palm heel to the nose, you know? So it was an interesting period of time. And I think I really, really can say that I enjoyed the golden age of like, if you want to say like action movies, you know? Um, yeah, you were a big part of it. That That's basically what my channel is about. If you haven't noticed from the background and the reason why I interviewed Jeff Langton and of course, why I really wanted to interview you is because, uh, I got to say, when I was growing up, you know, I obviously had my influences like Stallone, uh, Van Damme. You were right up there because of Renegade as like, okay, this is like one of the coolest guys out there riding motorcycles, uh, catching bad guys, doing karate. So literally, I wanted to be a bounty hunter when I grew up because of your show. Yeah. And, cool. and, and a lot cool. of people like me, especially in that, that era, man, um, yeah. you were one of those guys that like motivated us. Uh, speaking of which, I do want to ask you something about Renegade. And this is from another guy. He's got 40 years plus in martial arts. He's a president of an MC motorcycle club. And he's really happy that Renegade positively helped the image and profiling of bikers and wanted to ask you, did you put that in or was that more uh, the show head writer's idea that pushed that? Okay, so in part two of the interview, we're going to dig really deep into Renegade, one of the coolest shows ever. And I'm going to post that in the next couple of days. But while you guys wait, you might as well get your super health elixir.